for me, but I hope a little bit on theme for tonight. It's going to be pretty Halloween-y, including the food. As you can see here, look at this. There is literally a witch on this packaging, so it could not be more timely. This is my favorite instant ramen to make any time of year. Not just now, but the other day I was looking at the package and I to show you how I like to make instant ramen. So for today, I think we're going to make two packs. This is like spicy chicken flavor, but it's quattro cheese. So four cheese flavor, and even though I'm going to use two packs of ramen, I'll probably use almost all but not quite all of the spicy sauce. Let's go ahead and make a side though. We'll put that aside and get started on a little side dish. I make this side dish like once a month or every other month. I like to do pickling in the autumn months especially. It feels really fun to and jams, things like that this time of year. <laughs> so this is going to be a nice tart, uh, tangy sort of side dish. I think that that is nice to do with spicy. And the item we're going to be pickling today is this daikon. It's not the most beautiful daikon in the world, but of the selection at my local grocery store. It was the nicest looking, but you know, what are you, what are you gonna do? It's the best that they had. So I'm just gonna remove the skin on this. Um, I like it to have like a nice smooth edge instead of just washing the daikon. It's just like a nicer texture when it's pickled. I'm gonna tell you guys a secret is that even though my sweatshirt is like a Disneyland spirit jersey, I have never been to Disneyland. <laughs> I have a friend who has like a yearly pass, and if there's like um, a sweatshirt, like a seasonal one that I think is like really awesome, she'll sometimes be like, my little runner for me and I can give her money and she'll pick it up. So I'm kind of like a bit of a phony with this sweatshirt. I've never been in Disneyland. I've never been to Disney World. I'm just a Halloween person and I like having seasonal clothes so it just works out for me. Although I'll tell you what, I did have my very very first Disney trip ever recently but that was in Japan. So see how there's already so much moisture coming out of the daikon? We're going to do a little bit of work to get even more out of it because even though it's like a firm vegetable, like a radish is a very sturdy type of vegetable, there is just so much moisture inside. It's kind of shocking how much you can squeeze out. So, there's tons of methods you can use. I like to salt stuff beforehand. So, I'm just going to cut this daikon into perfect little bite-sized pieces. I like to try to make them all pretty consistent, more or less, but who cares if it's imperfect? It's just for me. <laughs> That's alright. I don't mind. It's easy to be uncritical of your own cooking because I have a lot of sympathy for the cook in this situation, you know. She tries her best, I just know it. Um, my favorite brand of knives recently 
simply announced that they are going to be releasing the majority of their like, kitchen knives in pastel colored handles. So like baby pink, uh, like a lavender color, I think there's like an ash gray, basically just cool colors. And certainly this was not an option when, you know, over the years I've been getting my knives. I have like two very trusty knives and I bought them on like Black Friday many years apart from each other. So it does feel kind of ridiculous to, you know, see this on the website and be like, oh, I they're knives I already have. But that little part of me that likes for things to be cute keeps trying to reason and be like, yeah, but they're pink. I don't know. I'm, I'm probably not gonna get them. It's tempting though, you know? They're just, they're just so beautiful. I'm using like about a tablespoon of salt here. Just to basically cover all the edges of the daikon to make them sweat, to make the moisture get drawn out, and like basically all the excess that we don't need, it will just seep out thanks to the salt. So I'm just gonna put this right in the sink and probably leave it for. You, you really want like an hour, more than an hour is great. And it's shocking how much moisture do, does come out. Let's go ahead and make a little like pickling liquid. Vinegar is always needed. I tend to use rice vinegar, not because it's better for this, but because I just always have rice vinegar in my fridge. Why, why buy more of something else, you know? Just use my tiniest pot for this because the jar I'm gonna be pickling things in is not very big. So I don't need that much liquid. Just get my sugar out and I think probably a little bit of spice. Why not? And the other main ingredient for this is, of course, turmeric. The daikon, such a lovely, like, gorgeous goldenrod color, but also the taste is just really nice and savory and delicious. This is my first official ASMR cooking video, so I'm feeling a little bit nervous about it, admittedly, but I really love cooking, so my enthusiasm will uh, carry over for any unprofessionalness because I'm, I'm not uh, that good at following recipes or anything like that. I just kind of follow my heart when it comes to cooking. So um, we've got sugar, we're gonna do a little bit of rice vinegar as well. Like the key ingredients for pickling stuff. I was really hoping to be able to pickle cucumbers this year to make like pickle pickles, but I really didn't have any success with pickle pickle uh, cucumbers. <laughs> I didn't have much success with cucumbers in my garden this year, so you know maybe next year. It was my first attempt really gardening and I did have some success ironically with peppers most of all uh, which is just so funny because I really don't eat like green or red peppers very much it's one of my least favorite vegetables but I did get quite a few zucchini which I was very happy to eat and 
a lot of green onions, actually. It turns out green onions are pretty easy to grow. Look at all that liquid. That all comes out in such a short amount of time. So I just have my little mason jar here. And I'm going to take the liquid-free daikon and gently place it in here. You don't need to rinse the daikon because a lot of the salt gets lost in the liquid and what's left over is just kind of an added pickling ingredient. I did want to tell you all something very exciting that's happening in my life. Um, if you watched my previous video, you may know about my little friend. My little friend, Lucifer the Cat, who, since I posted that video, I have made huge progress with Lucifer to see me every single day around the same time within like a couple hours of it and she now like runs to see me and she lets me pet her and she cuddles me and she's just such a sweetheart it feels very hmm, dare I say a little bit healing to have such a gorgeous, big, fluffy black cat in my life. So I'm going to continue to befriend her and feed her and give her love and try to figure out if she has an owner. I'm not sure, but I'm going to ask around and see because I want to make sure she has a warm home for the winter. You know, it's upcoming here. And either way, I want to make sure she's a safe place with me because oh, I'm in love with her, basically. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out, just by looking at her, like, how old she is. She's definitely not young. If I had to guess, I would say maybe five to seven, if not older. She's just so gentle with me. She's always very cuddly and she's still very timid in her body language, but it's almost like when when she leans in and pokes my hand with her head, it's almost like there's some relief there. I don't know. It's hard to explain, but she's so sweet. Now let's start cooking the actual main dish. Green onions are a really big part of this, and I'm using pretty much all of the onion. I think a lot of people think of instant ramen as like the fastest, easiest food possible, and I think of it that way too, but my like most delicious of this is what I'm making today. This is like the food when I am having a craving for something perfectly savory, delicious, spicy, cheesy, creamy. Like, this is the food that I go for. So, I always keep a whole pack of this ramen in my cupboard for such seems to happen ever so often, and it's usually, for me, I like it for lunch or like a late night kind of meal. So I'm separating these two different parts of the onion because I'm going to use them two different ways in this meal. The white part of the onion, the part that's like white to light green, I'm going to slice very thin mince very nice and smooth. This is like a very satisfying thing to do for me because even though I could probably do this 
this very quickly. It's nice to just slowly mince everything into tiny little pieces. And then for the other part of the onion, the more like green, green part of the green onion, this is going to be a delicious topping. So I like to cut it on an angle. I just think it looks nicer on top of the meal. It gives it like kind of a nice springy shape in my opinion. I am one of those people who I like eat with my eyes. Even if I'm just making a pancake, I kind of want it to be beautiful to look at because it's more satisfying to eat it. In my house, I do a lot of the cooking, because I like to do it. I think it's lucky when you can take on a chore that is something you wanted to do anyway. It's awfully convenient for me, isn't it? So here's what I'm using. Sesame oil, very important. That's what the onion is going to get cooked in, to give it such a good flavor. And the onion will add flavor to the oil. We're going to have some mirin as well. I use mirin a lot in cooking, so better to just get the huge bottle. A little bit of rice vinegar again, but this is going to be actually for cooking my eggs. I'm going to do a little poached egg action. I love a poached egg. Also need soy sauce. This is just regular soy sauce. Um, I don't usually cook this big one, I usually like pour it out into my smaller bottle, but I can't find that today. A little roasted sesame seeds. This is another topping. Now, I like to use a little bit of QB mayo in my ramen. I'm interested to know what you guys will make of that. I don't know if it's common, but a little bit of broth that I have left over. There's not very much in here, but I'm just going to use it up because it's sitting in my fridge. I love to make a meal that just uses up a bunch of half yeast stuff. And then, of course, eggs. So this is pretty much it. I like to get everything ready before I start actually this. And then I also need the Pyrex here because pasta water, noodle water really, it's going to be a big part of this recipe and salt as well for the noodle water. Okay, so now I have all of that laid out. I think I'm going to make a little drink first just so that everything's ready for when the food is hot. unsweetened, so it doesn't have, like, a sugary quality. It's just super refreshing and, like, just nice to have a spicy meal, you know. The 
That is very nice. Okay, we don't need this anymore, but we need our plate and our side plate. I'm going to go ahead and dish out a little bit of pickled icon for myself. I'm kind of like in the groove of actually making ramen. I don't really like to have to grab stuff out of cupboards or set things up because I want to eat it while it is like super hot, but like really warm. It's been so rainy here. I think a lot of Ontario is just getting like tons of rain right now, which is classic fall. I mean, over the course where I live, but it's making me want spicy food more than anything. I kind of want a meal that makes me sweat a little bit. I have the perfect plate for this, so that's all set up. And one more thing we need is to actually get these little packets sort of prepped. I like to take sauce out and with everything kind of set to the side I can just cut them open and they'll be ready for me when I need them this spicy sauce is so good I think you can buy it like just on its own I've seen it in some grocery stores so I need to eventually just do that because it's also really good on roasted vegetables, if you're curious. It's also, like, the most staining thing in the world, so you have to be careful if you get any of this on your clothing. Like, good luck. It's never gonna go well. <laughs> it's bright. recipes that are like one pot, make it all in one pot, and then you don't have to do any dishes. I guess my mindset's like, wait, how many pots can I do? Could I do more pots? Please. I would love to. <laughs> but when you want this to all come together at once, you kind of need three pots. So in the back one, I'm putting just vinegar. This is just so that it helps me poach my egg. I'll keep the egg together nicer. And a tiny little bit of salt. This is like less than a quarter of a teaspoon. Just a little, little bit of salt to season the water. I don't want to over salt this because I'm going to use pasta water. I can call it a pasta just noodle water, uh, but it's going to be a part of my sauce. When I'm poaching an egg, I always, like, crack them open into little bowls or measuring cups, just in case, because you cannot break the yolk for this to work. So, if I do end up breaking the yolk, I'll just set it aside and use that in some other meal, but to poach an egg, it has to be like a completely intact yolk. So luckily, I worked out on this one. I'm not gonna act like I don't usually break these. I break the yolk all the time, and then I have scrambled eggs for dinner. A little bit of sesame oil into the pan. And now I'm going to put those, like, the, the white part of the green onion in here. Just on low, just to get them sizzling a little bit. And it's going to combine with, like, the best smell. Oh, I love the smell of sesame oil and green onion. I'm going to put both of these pots of water onto high heat so they get nice and boiling. 
and then let's put these eggs right here for easy access when I need them. When the green onion starts like kind of foaming and sizzling in a delightful manner, this is the point at which I generally like to pour in a bunch of um, like all of the ingredients, just everything. And I undercook the noodles just a little bit because 
as they're in the sauce here. They just like thicken the sauce so much and I find that this is a really good way to achieve a really lovely like creamy texture that's just very satisfying to eat. So I'm just gonna kind of leave this in the pan to get really really hot and nice and let's let's fish these little uh, eggs out of here onto a little paper towel to absorb the excess water. They don't need uh, too much work. They're pretty much perfect as is so we can start getting the noodles ready. Look how much the sauce by the noodles sitting here. Absolute perfection. I wouldn't be mad if there was a ton of extra sauce, but I think it's a, it ended up pretty much perfectly portioned. So, gotta use a Halloween plate, I think, especially one with a little black cat. Of course. How much can I put on this plate? I don't think I can do the entire on this plate, but pretty much most of it. And now I'm gonna put the eggs on top. Oh, these might be too big to put on top. Maybe I should have just done one egg, too. Is very ambitious. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> Apparently not concerned about aesthetics that much. I just want to eat So now these beautiful green onions are going on top. I like a lot um, because I like onion. But, you know, if you are making it, you don't have to put that much yourself. Let's do a little bit of ambiance so we can fully enjoy this meal. It's been raining on and off the morning. I kind of wish to just like storm because I love a proper thunderstorm. I have so many good memories of laying on the ground with my older sister near a window and just watching the lightning in the sky. She always made stuff fun so that things weren't scary, you know, and it's kind of made me like that as an adult. Find things scary if they're just exciting. You know, these are really cool. I'm so excited to show you these. These are candles my friend made for me. She made me some, I think, the year before last year as well, but I burned them before. I really got to show you guys, so I wanted to make sure this year to show you them properly. She hand dipped them, and they're just like so wonderfully spooky and perfect for this time of year, especially because they're just short and cute, and I love how she does the wrapping. It feels very magical, so today I will finally open these, and we'll burn one of these together. I'm sure there is some good luck in this um, candle wick trimmer is from Yankee Candle, of all places. I thought it looked like really cool and almost kind of like an anthropology one, but it's just from Yankee Candle. <laughs> and I have my little vintage um, candlestick holder that always makes me feel a little bit like Scrooge to use me wandering the halls, holding on this, this candlestick, saying things that don't make sense, like, oh, there's more of a grave than a grave about you. And people are like, what? That doesn't, no one said anything. I kind of want a little sleep gap like Scrooge this year. Wouldn't that be perfect? What a, what a great fashion I got. Anyway, I use this candlestick holder every 
every day. Another antique mall find. Damn, it's an antique mall. It was like eight dollars. The exact perfect amount to spend. just from Ikea. The other parts of the year I have like white lanterns for tea lights, but you know, for Halloween you really have to do black lanterns. It's just more appropriate. Even if it's not my year-round aesthetic, I will commit to the theme every time. It's kind of a fun time of year for me because I get to live out maybe more goth lifestyle. <laughs> and it's fun to do something so different. You gotta let yourself have that. I have some really great comics to read today. Silver Coin. And when I arrived at the castle, just totally been in the mood for like kind of scary books lately. Even like prose books. I've been reading scary satisfying part of eating poached eggs is when you break open the yolk and you get the just gorgeous golden yellow treasure that is the yolk. very spicy, but so delicious. Like, my favorite. stuff right now. <clears throat> oh my god. It is hard to not eat this super fast. Time to read something scary is in the middle of the day. That way, you don't get scared and have to go to bed.
art is so inspiring to me. Well, my darlings, thank you so much. For joining me for this cooking video and getting to eat as well. It's very fun for me and maybe relaxing for you, I hope. Thank you all so much as always for being there.